araw sa ating lahat. This is Rowel G. Olila, an assistant professor, one of Aurora State College of Technology and presently designated as the director of the education department. Uh, today, I will be sharing to you some of my uh, reflections that I was able to make for my almost 16 years of being in the teaching profession. So, I hope that all of you will listen attentively and then uh, I am also expecting that you're going to have uh, uh, a clear grasp of what the teaching profession is all about. It is said that the success of every learner relies solely on the creativity of the teacher. But as we go on with uh, our our teaching as we go on with the manner on how we shall deliver our instruction, motivate our students, we have to also consider that there are other factors that we need to uh, consider in order for us to determine the level of success of the, of the, of the teacher. Uh, there are also strategies involved. We have to also consider the individual differences, the art of delivery, the sincerity, the commitment and dedication of the teacher and the teaching profession. Although we understand that the teacher is one of the most influential person inside the classroom, uh, but we cannot ignore the fact that there are other factors that can be attributed to the, to the success of the teaching and learning situation and also the success of the whole uh, teaching and learning process in itself. As we teach, we're going to have so many different experiences which are totally different from our expectations. When we were in college, we were taught that everything will happen just fine. Everything will happen according to our expectations and everything will happen according to the theoretical concepts that we were uh, that we studied when you were when we were in in college but as you go along you're going to encounter a lot of students who are bored a lot of students who are unmotivated to learn and then uh, they will say that it's difficult to understand the lesson and they will also claim that there is too much to learn and then you're going to ask yourself later on with all the experiences which are totally different from our expectation, you're going to ask to, act to, act to, act to question yourself, is there any way to improve learning? Before you will decide to take the or to enroll the, uh, the education, the, the course or the teaching, enter into the teaching profession, one of the most important questions that you need to, to ask is that, uh, is it really your passion? Is it really your mission? Is it really your vocation? So in order for you to properly answer all this question and to be resolved, okay, that you really wanted to embrace this profession as a mission, uh, as a profession and as a, as a vocation, it's really important that you begin searching for the self. Bago tayo magpatuloy sa ating decision, ano, sabi nga natin kanina, it is really important for anyone who wish to enter into the teaching profession to make an, a self-examination with regard to your intents and motives, why you really wanted to enter the teaching profession. And these existential questions that you need to ask to yourself must be answered so that at the end of the day, you're going to have a clear idea and grasp with regard to what the teaching profession is all about together with the contributions that you can make okay, as an educator. So let's begin with the first question. What is life? Who am I? Why am I here? What am I living for? What is reality? What is good to do? How should I live my life meaningfully? And why do I teach? What should I teach? And uh, provided that I was able to answer the, re the, the questions, why do I teach and what should I teach? I should also uh, begin to explore for answers on how should I teach. Reflective teaching plays a very significant role uh, in order for anyone who wanted to enter the teaching profession to have a clear answer with regard to the questions that we uh, discuss 
uh, in the previous slide. It is really important for a teacher to reflect a lot in order for the teacher to personally evaluate what is happening with uh, what is happening in the actual uh, classroom uh, scenario and how those experiences can be improved or be made better, what went wrong, and together with uh, the capacity to identify the most uh, the most significant accomplishments as well as the, uh, the factors contributed to the success of the learning experience. So reflective teaching is a personal tool that teachers can use to observe and evaluate the way they behave in their classroom. It can be both a private process as well as one that you discuss with your colleagues. When you collect information regarding what went on in your classroom and take the time to analyze it from a distance, you can identify more than just what worked and what didn't. You will be able to look at the underlying principles and beliefs that define the way that you work. It is really important that you discuss all those concerns to your co-teachers, discuss your concerns to your students so that you can properly identify what are the most significant intervention strategies that can be made, the improvement that can be made in the teaching and learning process that uh, the, when, when, the, when colleagues feedback as well as students feedback were sought, we can properly identify the most uh, important innovation that we need to, the, to do or to, to innovate or, or develop that we can uh, change or totally reinvent the teaching and learning experience. Reflective teaching is uh, more than just summarizing what happened in the classroom according to our lecture here. If you spend all your time discussing the events of the lesson, it's possible to jump to abrupt conclusions about why things happened as they did. Most importantly, you have to uh, be more uh, systematic uh, in looking at what really happened and this reflective teaching to be more systematic, it requires patience and careful observation of the entire experience. Quoting Jack Richards, according to him, reflection or critical reflection refers to an activity or process in which an experience is recalled, considered, and evaluated usually in relation to a broader purpose. Further, it is a response to past experience and involves conscious recall and examination of the experience as a basis for evaluation and decision making and as a source for planning and action. According to Bartlett in 1990, he points out that becoming a reflective teacher involves moving beyond the primary concern with instructional techniques and how to questions and asking what and why questions that regard instructions and managerial techniques not as ends in themselves, but as part of broader educational purposes. Asking what and why questions give us a certain power over our teaching. We could claim that the degree of autonomy and responsibility we have in our work as teachers is determined by the level of control we can exercise over our actions. In reflecting on the above kind of questions, we begin to exercise control and the possibility of transforming our everyday classroom life. Further, the process of reflective teaching supports the development and maintenance of professional uh, expertise. We can conceptualize successive levels of expertise expertise in teaching, <clears throat> those that student teachers may attain at the beginning, middle, and end of their courses, those of the new teacher after their induction to full-time school life, and those of the experienced expert teacher, and given the nature of teaching, professional development, and learning should never stop. Bilang isang guru, ano, I do a lot of reflection, and that reflection may be a personal reflection, a pre reflection about what life is, a reflection about uh, my, my life as a teacher, reflection about relationship, anything. Ano? So what you can see from our 
PowerPoint presentation here is actually an example of my personal reflection that uh, allows me to examine the things, the conditions around me that enables me or open a lot of opportunities for me to discover and explore for something new. So I, may I will just read so many ideas and so many plans. I can't even imagine how I'm going to start. I ended up lying on the hammock, stare stars, and wish that this moment will last for a while. Thinking about nothing, wondering about the mysterious night, dreaming about the future, believing about this design, seeing the connection, choosing the path that leads to a place that gives contentment and pacify the desires of the heart. This moment is a precious one. It brought me back to my core and led me to realize that life is perfectly imperfect. Perfection leads to disappointment and disillusion, but despite of its imperfections, life can still be beautiful. There are so many reasons to be, if you will just wonder. At basis, ano, uh, this was posted in my uh, Facebook account, and uh, even my previous students who were already graduates of their respective courses, uh, they, they comment, okay? Uh, they also give feedback with regard to the reflection that I made with regard to what are those plans that I need to do in the related to my career, related to my family life, related to my personal and professional uh, development. According to Socrates, unexamined life is not worth living. Translating this uh, philosophy of Socrates into Filipino would mean ang isang buhay na hindi pinagninilayan ay isang buhay na walang saisay. We all believe that knowledge was acquired through reason and that the individual could be improved through education. That's why education never lost its significance even during the ancient times, even in the different epoch, epochs or era or period in our history. And still, the generation of today still value education because we believe that this is the only way that we can improve the present generation and at the same time, the future. So the questions that really matter that we need to ask is that what is the purpose of life and what are the values by which people should live? I found this quotation from the internet stating that educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So the, the, the quote here is uh, uh, clearly indicates that the ultimate goal of education is to produce better individuals. Aside from the technical skills that we can gain from education, uh, everyone, uh, society is also expecting that uh, all those who were able to complete their respective degrees, those who were called educated, will become better individuals who's going to make significant contributions in society and in the world. Okay, so let's continue. Sometimes the thing your students need most right now has nothing to do with what's on your lesson plan. Uh, natatandaan ko ano, when I... I was still a PT teacher and I observed one of our graduating students uh, doing her final demonstration among elementary students. And the topic is about the proper taking care of the animals. Okay, As a teacher uh, begin her introduction, uh, her motivation activity, uh, he, she is asking her students to do something. All of a sudden, unexpectedly, Biglang isang estudyante tumayo at kumanta. Sabi ng estudyante, let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. Nagulat si teacher. Okay? And the teacher asked the student to stop from singing and continue with the activity. But the student did not stop. And the, the student continued singing. Ito yung mga panahon na uh, the, the, the movie Frozen was once... Uh, as uh, uh, is really popular ano ito yung parang uh, popular among children and almost every children in in the community in every country is singing the song uh, yeah, the, the the song in the movie Frozen and then i i i, I observe the student ano kinagalitan niya ang kanyang estudyante kasi nga kailangan niyang matapos ang kanyang aralin ang kanyang teaching demonstration according to kung paano niya sinulat ang kanyang lesson plan. Okay. So after the after the teaching demonstration, I 
during our post conference okay i asked the student bakit mo pinatigil okay why did you uh, uh, tell the student to stop from singing kasi sabi niya sir uh, that is not according to what is written in my lesson plan my lesson plan is uh, telling them to do another task and then i also as a student hindi mo ba alam na yung na yung movie in frozen uh, is a very good example a movie uh, that will give you a very good example with regard to how shall we properly take care of the animals remember the relationship between uh, sven and christoph okay so maliwanag po ano na hindi alam ni teacher kung ano ang moving frozen kaya nga mahalaga na ang guro it's really important for a teacher to have uh, a background of different uh, issues concerns trends it may be trending in, in politics in showbiz it may be uh, trending in whatever platforms or concerns ano, in order for you to become flexible with regard to how shall we deliver our lessons in that particular case in that particular case uh, the students okay uh, are already saying ano, kasi uh, right after the student uh, uh, started to sing that song lahat na ng mga kanyang mga classmate ay kumanta na in chorus they all sang together in chorus because uh, the movie Frozen is one of the most uh, watched movies, okay? The most popular movie among children at that time. And eventually, nagalit na si teacher kasi hindi na niya kayang kontrolin ng crowd. And the teacher is telling the student to stop and go back to the original task given to them in the motivation part. Okay? Kaya it's important, ano, it's really important for a teacher to uh, to have a knowledge about to what concerns the children, what concerns uh, that they're the most uh, in the, the most influential uh, uh, experiences that they have. Okay, in order for you to properly relate to their experiences. Sabi nga natin dito, every teacher is a teacher of values of history, philosophy, ethics, morality, science, and technology, and even logic. Uh, had the teacher known the value or the the the, the value okay, promoted in the movie person, the teacher can properly relate to what the student is telling about. Okay? At may kukonekta na agad niya ang kanyang signatura doon sa kanyang, doon sa sinasabi ng sudyante because in the movie Frozen, uh, it clearly states or shows uh, a good relationship between Sven, the deer or the reindeer and Kristoff, one of the main characters in the story. Isa sa mga, mga refleksyon na aking sinagawa nung panahon ng kasagsaga ng eleksyon nung May 2016, the presidential election, one of the most uh, uh, popular, exciting uh, election in the Philippine politics. Ano, uh, I made the reflection with regard to the trend, with regard to the opinions of the masses as reflected from the, the different news coming out in the television, coming out in the social media. So, uh, this goes uh, my reflection. Sa mahabang panahon ng pangako ng pagbabago ng buhay ng mga Filipino, siguro nga pagod na si Juan. Wala na ang pag-asa sa pagbabagong inaasam. Ang ngiting inilalaan para sa magandang bukas ay napawi na at napalitan ng pagkadismaya at kawalan ng pag-asa at kalungkutan. Ang hinihinging pagbabago ay mananatiling isang ilusyon kung hindi siya susugal. Siguro nga pagod na si Juan. Handa na niyang isugal ang kanyang sariling kalayaan para isang pangarap na matagal nang inaasam. Na kung hindi siya susugal, alam niyang sa kanyang sarili na walang mangyayari dahil sila-sila din naman ang nagpapalit-palitan sa kapangyarihan. Siguro nga pagod na si Juan. Pagod na sa pareho at paulit-ulit na pangako ng pagbabago sa kaunlaran. Pagod na sa mga peking iti ng mga politikong kada tatlong taon lang niya nasisilayan. Pagod na sa sistemang ganid at kamkam. Pagod na sa pakikinig at pag-alam kung gaano na sila kayaman. Pagod na sa balita na tumaas na ang antas ng buhay ng karamihan. Kahit may takot at pangamba sa kanyang gagawin at hindi sigurado ang kalalabasan. May takot man at pangamba. Handa na siyang sumugal. Pagod na nga siguro si Juan. Wala na ang kanyang ngiti. 
handa na siyang sumugal. Ra? So pinapaliwanag ano, pinapaliwanag sa aking post na to sa aking FB account. Ang aking pag-aanalisa at refleksyon, uh, this is not actually a political analysis with regard to what is happening in the country, but it is more of a sentiment with regard to the trend uh, the public opinion considering that, that one of the most popular candidates during the time for uh, for the position of the president in the Republic of the Philippines uh, uh, is uh, Mayor Rodrigo Duterte, who then later on became the, the elected president of the Republic of the Philippines in 2016. So this is not a political, it is more of a sentiment with regard to the public opinions of the Filipino people. And surprisingly, no, I was able to get feedback even from my former students who were already uh, graduates of their respective degrees. Okay, uh, ito yung sinasabi natin na sa pamamagitan ng iba't ibang mga platform, mga refleksyon at pag-aanalisa, and then later on posted in my Facebook account, I was able to reach out even to my students, former students, and we can still connect to one another, share opinions with regard to uh, this, this sentiment regarding the Philippine politics, at makikita mo ang kanilang mga pagkapahalaga, ano ang kanilang mga desisyon, pumapabor ba sila o hindi, kasama ba sila sa bandwagon na naniniwala na this is the only chance, this is the change that we are waiting for in the Philippine politics. At sa aking sariling pamaraan, nagagawa nating uh, ma-evaluate, -ma mabigyan ng guidance, mabigyan ng tamang uh, direksyon at pag-aanalisa ang kanilang mga sentimento kung ito ba talaga sa palagay nila ay makakatulong para uh, magkaroon ng mga pagbabago sa usaping uh, pampolitika ng ating bansa at to instill na rin, ano, to instill uh, good citizenship values and to inspire action on the part of our uh, citizens with regard to their sense of responsibility on how we can possibly contribute in the uh, towards changes that we expect from Philippine politics. And another post, ano, this is not something political but more of uh, according, considering that uh, uh, we celebrate the Valentine's Day ano, every February 14. At as I read the news feed, okay, maraming mga post noon na parang uh, sinasabi na wala silang mga partner, wala silang boyfriend, girlfriend, and their life is already miserable. And I came to question ano, uh, the, the idea or the reality of, is it really true that having no uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or not being in a relationship would already mean or indicate that your life is miserable and lonely? And for me, it's not. So, I, I reflected and then I came up with this reflection. So, this is my reflection. Do not just love because of the season. Do not just love because everybody does. Love for a reason and that reason should be personal and special. Having a relationship is not just status but more of a challenge and a test. A test of self-worth and self-respect. Maligayang buwan ng mga puso everyone. Nalulungkot ako ano. I'm really sad to hear uh, even from our high school or even from elementary high school and college students to hear that uh, having having no one okay, to uh, to have parang walang date sa Valentine's Day parang naka, napakalungkot na kanilang buhay but they don't realize that what is the most important aspect or part of relationship is that we were able to retain our uh, self-worth and self-respect huwag nating uh, wag nating ipagpalit ang respeto natin sa ating sarili at yung pagkapahalaga natin sa ating sarili kapalit nung sinasabi nating mga pagkamahal. Pero it's really sad to know that many of our students are really ready and prepared to do everything to lose their self-worth and to lose their self-respect just for the sake of the word love. At matapos ngang may post sa aking FB account, ang quotation na yan, ang aking refleksyon, binaha ng napakarami mga komento ang aking post from my former students, my friends, and at, at, at doon ako naniwala na ang usaping pag-ibig ay hindi isang uh, topic na applicable lamang sa isang particular group of people. This is a topic that interests all generations of all ages. My idea is that 
uh, every people or no one shall lose self-respect and self-worth for the sake of love. Okay. Uh, sa isang aking subject, ano, pagdating uh, sa philosophy of man, all of a sudden, as I discuss my lesson to them, all of a sudden, and I, I don't really know the reason why all of a sudden that question came out. Sabi niya, sir, bakit ang isang lalaki ay hindi nakokontento sa isa? Okay. So, I answer the student uh, immediately. Kung confident kang mahal ka niya, hindi ka magdududa. Okay. And all of a sudden, the boys in the class, okay, smiled silently and the, the girls roar in uh, as, a, as a form of retaliation from my comment. Okay? So, kung, maha, kung confident kang mahal ka niya, hindi ka magdududa. Okay? So, ano, uh, yeah, yes, okay, uh, it is not really important, ano, uh, what, according to our, uh, uh, to the quotation that we have in the previews, what the student the most is not actually according to our lesson plan. And if they brought out that issue, and if you have the capacity to answer all those, make sure to answer in order for you to properly guide them. You just don't know the influence. You just don't know the uh, the influence that you were able to make with that response. Yan, another reflection, no? uh, na may kinalaman naman sa buhay na sangguro. We are, we all know that teacher performs a lot of responsibilities both in school, at home, and so many other concerns. Okay? Kasi hindi lang naman tayo isang guro. So sabi ko dito, most of the time we think we are superhuman, possessing superhuman powers, exhausting all the energy, draining every bit of it for something we think is more important than anything else. We neglect ourselves. We ignore the whimpering of every single cell of our body calling for rest. Then we will try to restore when the damage is irreparable. We are too absorbed with our respective roles that we tend to forget ourselves. Totoo po ito sa guru, ano, uh, walang, kapik, walang katigilan, walang ka, ka, kapigtigilan ng trabaho, okay? We do a lot of responsibilities, uh, we juggle our time for our family, especially if we have children to take care, especially if we have children to to teach at the same time, especially related to their subjects and their projects, okay? And then when we go to school, we do a lot of responsibilities and after doing after doing our task at home, okay, when all uh, the children and uh, the husband or the partner are already asleep, we will go back to our task and spending uh, until 12 midnight or even 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. just to finish our respective task. Okay, so dapat po, eh, we came to re I came to realize that we should not neglect ourselves. We should not ignore the rest okay, needed by our body because it's really difficult if it's possible to restore when the damage is already irreparable. We should also uh, not to be too absorbed with our respective roles and we should never try to forget ourselves. Napakadaming mga refleksyon, ano? napakadaming mga refleksyon na pwede natin maibahagi. Like this one, even a rare diamond needs cutting and polishing to bring out its luster. The sweetest grapes need constant pressing to make the best wine. Metamorphosis is indeed a painful process, but like the agriculture pillar, will turn into the most beautiful butterfly. Okay? Next, hindi karera ang buhay, hindi paunahang makarating sa finish line. Ang mahalaga, naging masaya ka sa iyong karanasan at wala kang pinagsisihan sa mga bagay-bagay. And then another, don't wait for the perfect man or woman to come into your life. They don't exist. If they do, they don't need you because they are already perfect in themselves. Look for someone that will complement your being incomplete. They may be your total opposite, but that's the joy of being in a relationship. Another, sometimes you just have to let yourself be carried by circumstances. It is not having no direction, but letting the unseen hand choose the course. Then you will realize that you are there because of a purpose. Okay, so there are so many reflections. Ano? Another reflection that I was able to make and became one of my uh, teaching principles okay, that I use as a guide uh, in as I teach uh, students, especially my, the, the future educators of our country. So, according to this, uh, according to this philosophy, 
A learner is not an empty shell. He or she possesses an innate potential that needs to be unleashed, and only a skilled teacher can facilitate its birth without pain, without threat, without imposition. A skilled teacher needs not to induce its birth. Okay? Naniniwala tayo na ang bawat mag-aaral ay may potensyal na, na, na taglay. Ang kailangan lang niya ay mapalabas ang potensyal na yan. At ang isang guro na biyasa sa kanyang pagtuturo ay kala, kayang palabasin ang karunungan na yan na hindi ka kailangan gumamit ng panakot, na hindi kailangan maging uh, masakit ang magiging karanasan, na hindi kailangan magdikta. Ang isang uh, skilled na teacher o ang isang gurong mahusay sa kanyang larangan ay hindi kailangan puwersahin ang 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 pagkabadaloy o ang pagsilang ng karunungan. Yan. X to hide under the guys. There are so many reflections okay, about relationship, about love, about so many things. Yan. Uh, yeah. So let us continue. So we might ask ourselves, you know, what is the relationship of all those reflections to my role now as a teacher? And do we think that all those reflections related to politics, related to personal development, about relationship, and so many different experiences are actually related to my role as a teacher. Okay, the answer is that uh, the 1987 Philippine Constitution, Section 3, Paragraph 2 states that, that the educational institutions and teachers are part of educational institution, so therefore it is our role to inculcate patriotism and nationalism, foster love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the role of national heroes in historical development of the country, teach the rights and duties of citizenship, strengthen ethical and spiritual values, develop moral character and personal discipline, encourage critical thinking, broaden scientific and technological knowledge, and promote vocational efficiency. So if we're going to ask the question, what then? is the relationship of all those reflections at the time made okay with regard to my role as a teacher those are actually related and those are actually part okay of my role as a teacher because i cannot properly do what the philippine constitution uh, tells me to do okay accord uh, with regard to my role as a teacher if i am not going to uh, to to reflect integrate all those reflections okay uh, in my subject matter, especially in the uh, the teaching and actual learning situation. One of an example uh, question asked by one of my students states that, why do we need to follow the standards, morality and right reason? And who set the standards? Actually, this question, I can simply ignore the question alone you know, because like for example, if I am trying to finish a particular lesson and uh, the question is not actually related to my subject, I can simply ignore the lesson. But as a social science teacher, as a teacher of philosophy, as a teacher of ethics, as a teacher of uh, the, the, the uh, education that hopes to uh, develop future educators who are really concerned with regard to the right, the promotion of right values and attitudes, okay, especially among our future teachers. I, I cannot just ignore uh, this question. So why do we need to follow the standards, morality, and right reason? So I did not answer the student right away. Okay? I answered the student in a form of question. So why do we need to follow the standards? What do you think? Without the law, without without the law, without the standards, without the morality and without right reason, what do you think will happen to us, to our relationship with another individual, to our relationship to the rest of our community, to our relationship with the rest of our society, in our national government and in the world in general? Okay? So, if there will be no standards, there will be no order. Who set the standards? Okay, hindi po ang standard ay hindi lamang isang pamantayan na ginagawa na kung sino lang. Ito ay ginawa, nag-evolve na pamantayan ng lipunan in order for us to maintain order, lawlessness in our society. We cannot just set the standards kasi kung, kung, kung kakwestiyonin natin ng bakit may standard, 
kaninong pamantayan yan. Okay? We are questioning the morality of our society. We are questioning the standards of our society because standard is not just a personal standard of the person. It is a standard of society in general develop over time. Okay? At ulitin natin, without the standards of morality and without the standards of right reason, okay, there will be lawlessness and there will be disorder. Okay? Kaya nga ang halimbawa ko dito ay halimbawa tayo ay isang individual. Tinawag tayo ng, at, ng isang tao ng hayop ka sa kanyang exact term, hayop ka. Okay? Bakit tayo nagagalit? Kung walang pamantayan, so da, wala tayong dapat igagalit. Pero dahil alam natin ang kaibahan ng tao sa pagiging hayop, ang pamantayan ng tao at pagiging hayop, hindi natin pwedeng tanggapin na tayo hayop because we are totally different from animals because we follow morality, we follow the right reason, we follow a certain standard. But if it's, if it's okay for us to be called as an animal, like for example, like a dog, okay, okay, uh, if it's okay for us to, to be called as such, so therefore, we should not follow morality and right reason. And we should never follow any standards. But considering that we properly know the difference between a man and a woman, and we cannot allow ourselves to be called an animal, so therefore, we clearly, uh, we clearly understand that a higher standard must be observed and imposed to man. Okay? And that standard must be a standard of morality and a standard of right reason. So the important question that we need to ask is that, okay, so how can we make teaching as our profession, vocation, and our personal mission? Okay, so uh, according to Ebenstein, a teacher is an intellectual midwife that is facilitating the birth of knowledge. And, and the implications to teaching is that when it comes to methods and strategies, we have to realize that a learner is not an empty shell. So this was actually a philosophy that I was able to develop, uh, which was discussed in the previous slide, stating that the individual or the learner possesses an innate potential that needs to be unleashed. And only a skilled teacher can facilitate its birth without pain, without threat, without imposition. A skilled teacher needs not to induce its birth. Only a skilled teacher can make the teaching and learning process fun and enjoyable without having, uh, without without letting the children feel okay, or experience pain and threat or imposition along the process. Okay, so my teacher gave me the best gift of all, believing in me. A teacher plants the seeds of knowledge, sprinkles them with love, and patiently nurtures their growth to produce tomorrow's dreams. Okay. Uh, actually, oh, isa sa mga pinaka-paborito pinaka, ma, pinaka kong halimbawa when it comes to uh, trying to develop the innate potential of our learners that uh, our students will not learn according to our expectation. They have their own face. They have their own time. But what is most important is that they will grow. Okay? Parang katulad ng mga buto ng mais, itinanim natin mula sa isang uh, mula sa isang uh, bunga or pinanggalingan, ngunit isang o isang lupa, pero hindi sila tutubo ng sabay-sabay. Merong nahuhuli at may nauna. But what is the most important aspect is that they grow teacher was able to initiate the growth okay, among these children who hungers for uh, an experience that will unleash their potential we don't need to we don't need to bother ourselves with regard to how fast or how slow the student is learning what is most important is that they begin to grow they begin to discover and explore their potential and the teacher is one of the most influential factor for that initial growth. Yan. So nakikita po natin ano, sabay-sabay nating itinanim galing sa isang bunga o lalagyan pare-pareho ang lupa, pare-pareho ang dami ng input ng araw at ng tubig but they grow differently. Some will grow okay, faster than the others. 
some will grow normally okay uh the same with the others and some will grow slow okay but the most important aspect okay of the teaching and learning process that we were able to initiate the growth of the person okay we just need to learn to wait for them to maximize okay their innate potentials that were unleashed because of the capacity of the teacher to facilitate its birth yeah so what if you are not happy okay uh it my, my personal answer with regard to this question is that don't let your daily routine become a punishment for yourself and for your students do not make yourself suffer because everyone deserves to be happy and so are you you have to quit find another job only a happy teacher can learn to love his or her profession i am saddened with the fact that there are those who are trying to uh, enter into the teaching profession um, just because of the salary just because of the stable job that they can uh, experience okay, from the Department of Education although we all know that we all uh, everyone needs to have a stable source of income but we actually we can actually learn to love our teaching profession dapat hindi natin hinahayaan na yung kawalan ng kasiyahan sa ating ginagawa ay magiging dahilan din para magsuffer ang kalidad ng edukasyon na ibinibigay natin sa ating mga mag-aral. Nalulungkot akong marinig na sasabihin ng mga guro sa kanila mga paaralan na bahala kayo dyan. Kung hindi kayo matuto, wala akong pakialam ang mahalaga. Ako ay tumatanggap ng sweldo at bonus ng dalawang beses sa loob ng isang taon. Okay, I will repeat, only a happy teacher can learn to love his or her profession that regardless of the inconveniences the challenges that we experience along the way the sacrifices that we're going to do for our students that our personal sacrifice of even uh, 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 taking a part of our salary just to provide the instructional materials okay that our students can can learn can enjoy the experience okay as long as you are happy Okay, you can learn to love your profession regardless of the inconveniences that you have right now, regardless of the challenges and difficulties that you experience with regard to your current setup. And as a mission, you are expected to contribute to the betterment of the world in your own unique way. Your unique and most significant contribution to the humanization of life on earth is in the field where we are now teaching. So naniniwala po tayo ano, although most of us will ignore, will take for granted the, the, the influence of teachers among the lives of our students and its impact to the society and in the world in general. But uh, as a teacher, ano, for being in the profession for almost 16 years, I experience a satisfaction that I cannot describe. Whenever I see my students successful in their respective fields, and then whenever they will ask me or uh, greet me, uh, whenever they will, uh, whenever we cross our way, so I'm really happy and not to know that I was able to contribute, and I am really glad hearing them say that uh, they are really thankful for the knowledge, for the experience, for the passion that they. Uh, learn from me because they were able to use that okay in order for them to become who to where they are right now so there's some kind of happiness that cannot be described and so uh, an open letter okay states here that I am suspicious of education my request is help your students become human your efforts must never produce learned monsters, skilled psychopaths, and eggmans. Reading, writing, arithmetic are important only if they serve to make our children human. Totoo po yun, ano, naniniwala tayo na ang education is one of the uh, institutions that can help transform our society. We are sad to know that the, those uh, key officials in our government who were products of highly prestigious universities in our country were the ones engaged in corruption, were the ones engaged in abuses, were the ones engaged in 
uh, practices that tends to ignore the limit and oppress the poor, especially the people who don't have the capacity to fight for themselves. Nalulungkot tayo doon dahil naniniwala tayo na ang paaralan kasama ng mga guro ang isang instrumento para maging ganap na makatao ang ating mundo na maging ganap na tao ang mga kabataan. Hindi dapat ito isang instrumento upang makapag-develop pa tayo ng mga monsters, okay? the, the learned monsters, the skilled psychopaths, and ape mans in our society. They are important. The reading, the writing, and the arithmetic are important if they will make our children more human. Quoting Helen Caldicott, Teachers are the most responsible and important member of society because of their professional efforts affect the faith of the earth. And so the question is, how do teachers affect change, contribute in the betterment of the world? Uh, we should never ignore simple gestures of misbehavior. We should never ignore questionable values. Never ignore the little things that need to be checked and corrected because if you do, your classroom will be a perfect venue for antisocial behavior that challenges order and standards and even human values. Kaya nga po ako bilang isang guru, whenever a student asks me a question which is not actually related to my subject, I see to it that I answer all of them. Okay? I see to it that I will answer them and give them the, the answer that they deserve. And if you are able to convince them with your answer, they will respect you, okay? They will uh, be more confident. They, you, you will learn and you will earn their respect, okay? Yan, sabi ng isang estudyante sa akin, ano, uh, actually, uh, this was asked by one of my students before, what is the importance of your subject in my life? Can I use that when I finally became an engineer and land a job? Yan, so tinanong ko ang estudyante, kailan ka magiging engineer? Okay, three years from now, makaka-graduate ka. Okay? At pag take ka ng exam, let's say, makaka-babagsak ka sa first take at makakapasak pa lang sa second take. So, more or less, you will become 24 or 25 before you will become an engineer. Kailan ka naging isang Pilipino? ba? The moment you are born, you were already clothed with the rights and privileges uh, as stated in the Philippine Constitution. Okay? Ikaw ay nabuhay dahil sa karapatang mabuhay, the right to life. Kahit halimbawa tayo ay binabalak na tanggalin ng ating mga magulang o ng ating inasa at sa kanilang mga sinapunan. But you persevered because abortion is not allowed in the Philippines and we respect life. Okay? Nanganak ang nanay. Maaaring nanganak ang nanay at wala siyang pambayad sa kanyang hospital bill. Pero nakalabas ka pa rin ng hospital dahil ang pag ang hindi pagpayag na pagkapalabas sa pasyente dahil sa kawalan ng pambayad sa hospital bill can be attributed to uh, to can be attributed to illegal detention at nalaman ng iyong mga future na sakit na pwedeng ma-develop sa iyo na pwede ka palang magkaroon ng mga mental mental retardation autism and the like because of the newborn screening and so many more na tumungtong ka ng paaralan dahil naging karapatan mong makapag-aral at matuto okay nagkaroon ka ng maayos na maligayang buhay dahil karapatan mo yung yung beyond bilang bata at ang lahat ng yan ay tinataglay okay at sinasaad sa ating pinag-aaralang Philippine Constitution now, I will ask you, sabi ko sa sudyante, do you need my subject in your life? Okay? The answer is very clear. Yes. Because from the moment that that student was born, he was already clothed with all the rights and privileges that must be enjoyed by all Filipino citizens. Samantalang ang pagiging engineer, 24, 25 years old pa lamang niya, pwedeng ma-enjoy, pero ang karapatang tinatamasa niya, ang kaalaman na, tina, na, na, na tinatamasa niya mula sa ating konstitusyon ay naibigay na agad ng asignatura na may kinalaman sa politics, governance, and Philippine Constitution. And so I asked a student, okay, after explaining all those to him, now, do you need my subject? Another question in my philosophy class, ano, sabi ng isang estudyante ko, Sir, what is the purpose of saying ingat if our faith is already written? That regardless of how careful I will be, I am fated to die. 
I will die. No one can stop and eventually this shall happen to me. Yes, sabi ko, it's useless to say that, uh, to, say, to say, take care, okay? If we believe that our life is fate is, is already destined, okay? That we have a particular fate and destiny that regardless of uh, how careful we are, okay, what has been destined to us will happen eventually, okay? Pero sabi ko sa kanya, let me ask you, okay? I can choose to die right now in front of you. Okay? Is my death according to God, to, according to God's plan. Okay, if I'm not going to answer that question kasi parang I don't like the student to believe that life is unfair, that God is unfair kasi may mga buhay na masaya, may mga buhay naman na hindi. Bakit ang buhay ng isa ay hindi masaya, yung isa ay masaya samantalang Diyos ang gumagawa ng ating kapalaran. Okay, so that, that in that particular question, parang the student is trying to imply that God is an unfair God. So I decided not to ignore the question. Yes, sabi ko sa kanya, uh, it is useless to say, ingat, if our faith is already written, that regardless of how careful I am or will be, if I am fated to die, I will die. No one can stop and eventually this shall happen to all of us. But I asked the student, I can choose to die right now in front of you. Is my death according to God's plan? No. So therefore, the answer is that there are so many factors, okay, uh, involved, okay, okay, in in the life of man. It may be destiny, it may be fate, or it may be a personal choice. So these are the, the so many different factors. We cannot just attribute. Uh, to fate or to destiny, okay, about what is happening in our life. One of the most influential factor, determining factor with regard to what to ha what will happen to our life is our personal choice. Okay? Tayo ang pumipili ng ating kapalaran o gumagawa ng ating kapalaran. In that particular example, if I'm going to kill myself right now, okay, my death is not according to God's plan. It is my personal choice. Simula nung malaman ng aking mga sudyante ano, that, uh, I was, uh, that I am answering all those questions at naniniwala naman ako na dapat kailangan pag, uh, sagutin ito kasi either uh, it's really important for me to satisfy their curiosity and that I can still uh, properly guide them or give them a philosophy or uh, something that they can be used Okay, that they can use in order for them to be properly guided with regard to the decisions that they are making in their life. So another comment, sabi ng isang sa akin, Sir, for me, religion is just an accessory. Nagulat ako. Okay? I did not actually question ko anong kanyang religion, pero sabi niya, religion is just an accessory. And so I answered the student. Okay? Yes, sabi ko sa kanya ganon. Religion is just an accessory if you don't have a personal experience of God in your life. Okay? okay, to have a religion is not only a matter of being being part, being being a member. Okay, being a believer also has uh, uh, different responsibilities that you need to do. And because of that comment of my student with regard to the importance of religion in his life, na, nagbigay na tuloy ako ng isang story. Sabi ko sa kanya, uh, may isang aso na nakakita ng isang puting kuneho. And because of that, uh, of that, uh, of that, the dog started barking endlessly. And then the other dogs, naman, within the vicinity, na hindi naman nakakita sa puting koneho, ay nagsimula na rin makibatok. Okay? Pero hindi nila alam ang dahilan. Bakit kailangan nila bumatok? So nakigaya lang sila. Okay? After a while, because they don't know the reason why they should bark. The other dogs present in the vicinity who did not see the white rabbit, they stopped from barking. But the original dog who saw the white rabbit did not stop and continues on barking even the others, the other dogs already stopped. Anong ibig ko sabihin? If you were able to build a personal relationship of God in your life, okay, no matter how, okay, the, the, the influences, okay, no matter... Uh, what happened in your life even the people around you will discourage you from doing that you will never stop because you were able to develop a personal experience of God in your life and you can testify to God to that kaya nga sabi natin ang kahalagahan ng religion is a personal experience 
Kung tayo ay mga taong nakikiuso lang na may masasabi lang na may religion, nakikisama lang, pero hindi natin inaalam ang kahalagahan ng reliyon at ng Diyos sa ating buhay, parang katulad tayo ng mga asong nakikibatok, pero hindi natin ang dahilan, hindi natin alam ang dahilan kung bakit kailangan natin dumatok. So, it's really important for us to develop a personal experience of God okay, in, in our life that no matter uh, what amount of discouragement and criticism that we can receive from the people around us, we will continue because we properly know and understand that God is real and that we are doing our part and that we were able to develop our personal experience with God. Yan, isa sa mga challenging na comment or question that I was able to receive from my students that saying, Sir, madali lang pong sabihin dahil wala tayo sa sitwasyon at hindi alam ng iba ang sakit ng tunay na aking nararamdaman. You know what? This was shared by one of my students who experienced uh, successive deaths among uh, her loved ones. Her father died after a month, her mother died, and after a month, okay, her boyfriend died. That the person is supposed to be uh, her only and last source of strength in order for him to uh, to carry the the blows okay, of life be, uh, based from the experience of the death of her loved ones, and then that person died okay uh, uh, after. Uh, the death of the parents so na nalungkot din ako so sabi ko sa kanya with that okay i was i i in order for me to prove to her that i was able to say i na hindi lang ganun kadali ano na sabihin dahil wala ako sa tunay na sitwasyon i began uh, telling the whole class the experience of death okay of love one and i told them that the experience of death is not just a personal experience. It is an experience okay, that is true and common to all. The, the, the variation or the experience may be different from one another, but we all experience death. Okay, in time, you will learn the reason, okay, the wisdom, okay, uh, why that happens. Okay, you just have to, siguro, you just have to learn to pray to God to give you the wisdom in order for you to understand things and for you to carry all those, okay, the, to, to, to withstand the blows, okay, of the death of your loved ones. So, so I just told her that just pray to God, okay, find for you, for try to know the wisdom, okay, of that experience in order for you to continue living, okay, according to uh, to God's plan. Okay. Sabi ng isa, Sir, sinusubukan kong gawin ang sinasabi ninyong make a difference, do good, avoid evil, even if it's not popular. Pero na-realize ko, darating din palang panahon na mapapagod ka dahil ikaw na lang mag-isa at lahat sila ay gumagawa ng hindi mabuti at maganda. What are you saying is very ideal. Darating ang panahon, madadala ka din ng agos ng stema. Yan. Sa buhay, ano, hindi naman natin kailangang labanan ng agos. Kung pipilitin nating labanan ng agos, hindi natin kakayanin at later on, madadala na rin tayo ng sistema. Okay? Uh, akala kasi natin kapag gumawa tayo ng tama, okay, ay automatic magiging tama na ang lahat. Okay? It is not our responsibility to change people around us, but it is our responsibility to change ourselves. Okay, as long as we commit ourselves to do good, that 99% can never be 100% because there is this one man, okay, who remains uh, doing what is ethical, what is moral, and what is good, not only for him or her for herself, but for others and the society in general. Okay, hindi mo kailangang labanan ng agos, okay, tumabi ka lang at gawin mo kung ano ang alam mong nararapat na tama. Yan, sabi ng isang sudyante, and you know what, I, I felt challenged with this kind of question. Anyone can teach social sciences subjects even if not a social science teacher. You know what, I'm a social science teacher. And this kind of question is an, actually an insult on my expertise, an insult of my experience, an insult of everything that I boast of as a teacher of social science. Yes, sabi ko sa kanyang ganon, anyone can teach 
my subject but not as good as I do. At napatahimik ang mga estudyante. According to Cicero, a wise man is social. Ano? Kaya nga, from Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's really important for us to satisfy the physiological needs, the safety needs next, and then the love needs and esteem in order for the individual to reach self-actualization needs. Parang sinasabi nga po natin na ang mga pangangailangan na yan ay kailangan masatisfy in order for us to reach a point in our life in which we were able to actualize ourselves. Okay? So, uh, teaching may not be a lucrative position. It cannot guarantee financial security. It even means investing your personal time, energy, and resources. Sometimes it means disappointments, heartaches, and pains. But touching the hearts of people and opening the minds of children can give you joy and contentment which money could not buy. These are the moments I teach for. These are the moments I live for. You know what? One of the most uh, heartbreaking uh, experience okay, that was uh, shared to be by one of my students in Master of Arts in Education in our school, in our State College of Technology is that, sabi niya, sir, I was assigned in a coastal area. I was forced to leave my child, my only child, uh, with my relatives at home. And he is about to enroll in uh, grade 1. Okay, you know what, sir? I can teach all day. I can teach them a hundred times. I can teach hundreds of students in a day. But you know what? It's really heartbreaking to know that my child, after leaving him to my relatives at home, okay, he is still a non-reader. Ako bilang isang guro, I am doing everything I can. Sabi niya ganon. I spend uh, so many... Uh, I spent time and exert effort in order for me to ensure that all my students will learn and no one will be left behind. But it's really heartbreaking to realize and to know that my child, okay, which I left at home, is a non-reader. So this is actually heartbreaking. Uh, that's actually one of the sacrifices ano, that we need to make. Because during our first assignment, we cannot actually choose uh, the, the, the place where we will be designated or appointed. So most of the time, uh, teachers suffer a lot because they need to walk kilometers, okay, three to four hours of walk, crossing rivers, or kaya riding sheep, uh, 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 riding along horses or carabaos, or kahit ano pa mga, mga experiences para lamang sila makarating sa kanilang patutunguhan. So that entails a lot of responsibility. But uh, even if there are a lot of disappointments, heartaches, and pains, but touching the hearts of people and opening the minds of children can give you joy and contentment, which money could not buy. I cannot say that. And according to Carl Jung, one looks back with gratitude, with appreciation to the brilliant teachers, but with gratitude to those who touch our human feelings. According to John Dewey, if we teach today as we taught yesterday, we rob our children of tomorrow. Uh, what John Dewey here is trying to say is that it's really important for us to innovate. As we, as the different generation, okay, uh, every generation has their own needs. We need to innovate. We have to change the manner we teach because if we teach yesterday, today, as if we teach yesterday, okay, our our the teaching strategies and methods and even the content okay can be questioned with regard to its relevance its significance and responsiveness according to the needs of the present so mahalaga na ang guru regardless of our age regardless of uh, our specialization and circumstances we must continue to innovate ang pilasa pigo po dito ay uh, a teacher has to speak the language of his or her learner. We have to speak into their, we have to dive into their world and speak their language. If we really wanted, okay, uh, the, the experiences of our students, okay, uh, if we really wanted uh, our uh, teaching, our content and our strategy be relevant and responsive according to the experiences of our learners. So 
let's continue. So with this, <clears throat> according to the Bloom's Digital Taxonomy Verbs, as uh, generations emerge with different needs, okay, we really have also to develop different uh, uh, different assessment strategies, okay, that will uh, need that will respond, okay, to the current need, okay and standards of the present so instead of uh, remaining to the lots we have also we have to consider the higher order thinking skills and the higher order thinking skills okay when translated into meaningful activities uh, cognitive activities psychomotor activities and affective activities can be translated into a relevant and responsive education so according to the profile of a modern teacher here if you wanted uh, to become relevant so the characteristics that we must develop among the century 21st century teachers uh, because we are not actually experts in technology they are experts in the habits of the mind okay in a rapidly changing educational landscape modern educators must be see themselves as co-learners and not as teachers according to an adage nobody has a monopoly of knowledge allow themselves to fail often we should not wait until their experts to introduce something move into their students world even if it's a foreign territory like what i have said a while ago if we wanted to become relevant and responsive okay, according to the experiences of our learners we have to dive into their world and speak their language even if it's a foreign territory Let's continue. So we have to run towards their area of weakness, not away from it. Uh, we, are, we should be comfortable not knowing what is going to happen. We should allow or invite mistakes in our lives. We have to dream big and ask the question, why not? We should allow our students to teach each other. We should step outside our comfort zone, even if it's actually a foreign territory. We have to bravely face it because that is the need of the present. We have to embrace change and we have to feel secure asking our colleagues help. We should be a model for resiliency and perseverance. Okay, uh, I asked actually asked one of our students, like for example, even if you have a laptop, okay, you have all the PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation with you, okay, prepared, but when you were assigned in a coastal barangay na walang electricity, what will you do now? Okay, so I told them that remember that having no electricity in your place of assignment is not actually the end of the world. As a teachers, we are trained to be resilient, to be flexible, to be creative and resourceful. We have to make use of whatever is available in the, in the, in the area in order for us to ensure that students will learn despite the limitations of resources and all the things that we need that we believe will contribute in effective learning and teaching. We need to question everything. We have to believe that we can learn anything given the and effort. And so I would like to share to you my conclusion with regard to the sharing that we have ano, uh, for the past hour. Ano. And you know what? One of the most uh, uh, one of the most, one of my most important movie, it's, a, it's actually a movie that we watch with my children that uh, I was able to properly understand that it is not actually uh, uh, for children alone. We can learn from the movie, the, the Kung Fu Panda. Okay, so this is Master Shifu, if you, if you knew the movie. When the panda named Po was chosen as a dragon warrior and realizing that the chosen one knew nothing about Kung Fu, this began his greatest dilemma. He is expecting that the panda should have mastered at least the basics of martial arts. But to his dismay, the panda failed all his expectations. He attempted teaching the panda according to how he learned and have mastered Kung Fu, but the panda is a total disaster and tried to get rid of the panda as much as he could for he saw nothing promising with the big panda. So the question here is, how do you think the big fat panda became the dragon warrior and defeated the enemy name? The answer is, maybe it can according to Master Ugwe, if you are willing to guide it 
to nurture it and to believe in it just how to believe so by finding time to know a student better understanding the panda's dreams joys frustrations and even the things that motivate the panda leading him to realize i cannot train you the way i had been trained so master shipu came to realize that food is the source of panda and he take advantage of that food as the source of motivation and then leading the panda to realize that there is no secret to become the dragon warrior he just have to believe that he is special for him to become special kasi according to the movie i know if you are aware about the movie parang uh, panda is really uh, decisive in uh, trying to get the scroll the scroll is the one that will give the panda his power but upon uh, claiming the scroll and opening the scroll he saw nothing but a blank page but a mere reflection of himself and at first okay uh, panda did not realize okay, the meaning of the scroll okay okay until such time that sabi ng kanyang daddy nung, nung, nung goose okay there is no secret in making the the best uh, soup okay you just have to believe okay that it is special for it to become special and panda came to relate the idea of the scroll okay to uh, to the idea uh, given to him by his dad he just have to believe that he is special so for my reflection ano, as teachers sometimes we act like master shifu we easily judge and we simply lose hope and in spite of the determination of the student to learn we lose hope and retreat we impose our standards and our expectations we wanted them to learn according to how we learn that when they failed we never give them the chance unless we are willing to guide it to nurture it and to and as we go back to our students, we have to realize that our students differ in their capacities. We should not expect them to bear flowers if they are not capable of producing flowers but leaves. We should not expect them to bear fruits if they are not capable of bearing fruits but flowers. But there are some who are capable of producing leaves, flowers, and fruits. We just have to be willing to guide them, to nurture them, and to believe in them for them to become what they are supposed to be to be the best of they can be so to end my uh, presentation my lecture about uh, my personal reflections about the teaching profession i would like to share to you a poem that i personally developed okay when i was still a young teacher okay uh, and this actually explains my reasons my motivations and my idea with regard to what the teaching profession is all about and this poem is entitled i don't want to be a teacher so let's 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 read okay so i never dreamt of becoming a teacher but i became one i don't want to deal with hard-headed students but here i am still willing to understand i hate slow below average and narrow-minded individuals but late at night i sleep designing strategies just for them to understand. I find it tiring to speak all day, but I'm willing to repeat the lesson 100 times. Reading students' essays, compositions, checking quizzes and exams is hell, but I always run out of breath. It doesn't matter if a student is absent, but I'm eager to know the reason why. I find it enjoying to write a failing grade on students' class cards but suddenly, remedial exams take charge. Holidays and, and suspension of classes are much awaited, but will always spend extra hours for cover-up. I've made my revenge when a student fails to graduate, but I wept during the night. Teaching is financially reward unrewarding. I can never get rich, but I'm still dignified. I don't want to remain a teacher forever, but I, sh I shall retire only at 65. I still don't want to be a teacher because this profession is motivated by love. So that ends my sharing of my personal experiences and reflections as a teacher. Uh,
sana po nagkaroon tayo ng uh, maliwanag na pagkakaunawa kung ano nga ba ang teaching profession. Uh, if you find our video uh, comprehensive, touching, and uh, the, the, the presentation moves you and you begin to love the teaching profession, please leave a comment and share our, our PowerPoint presentation to your fellow educators and to anyone who wish or who are wishing to become a teacher and encourage them to teach and just like you to become a beacon of better tomorrow. Maraming salamat po at uh, uh, salamat sa pakikinig at inaasahan natin na patuloy niyong tatangkilikin ang ating mga pagbabahagi upang patuloy tayo maging kabahagi sa pagpapabuti, pagpapaiting ng kalidad ng edukasyon na may puso, na may pagamahal at mayroong pagkiling sa mga mag-aaral uh, upang mailabas natin ang kanilang tunay na potensyal. Sa ulitin, ito po si Teacher Roel G. Olila, ang inyong guro, ang inyong kaagapay sa pagsisikap para sa isang dekalidad ng edukasyon. Maraming salamat po. Thank <laughs> you.